Russia's plan to hike defense spending next year has divided opinion in Moscow, with some objecting to devoting more money to the Ukraine conflict, while many face a squeeze in living standards. Russia is to spend more than 40% of its total budget on defense and security next year, more than the money allocated for social welfare and education combined. It is an outrage. 80-year-old pensioner Irina told AFP in Moscow, we need to end this war and spending the budget on war is a crime. The government promised major investment in social support ahead of Monday's budget announcement, promising to make it a top priority. But the $145 billion draft defense budget suggests military spending has crowded out other sectors. Planned spending on national defense is more than twice that allocated to areas Moscow labels as social policy. The population of the country does not live so well. Pensioner Elena, 68, told AFP, I am generally against military action of any kind, in any country, in ours, and in general the whole world, she said. The Kremlin has heavily militarized Russia's economy since sending troops into Ukraine in February 2022, spending huge sums on arms and army salaries. That spending boom has fueled economic growth, helping the Kremlin buck initial predictions of a recession when it was hit with unprecedented Western sanctions in 2022. But it has caused surging inflation, a sensitive issue for many in a country where memories of economic instability following the Soviet collapse run deep. There is not enough for anything at all, not for treatment, not for anything, said 70-year-old Irina, who complained her pension was only 25,000 rubles or $260 a month. It's pennies. People are unprotected, she said. It's a shame and a disgrace that the country has no more money to treat its own children. She added, Moscow had already ramped up military spending to levels not seen since the Soviet Union era. The latest planned increase in spending will take Russia's defense budget to 13.5 trillion rubles or $145 billion in 2025, an annual increase of almost 30%. Some were supportive of the plans. If it is not to the detriment of education, medicine, some other social programs. In the current situation, an increase in the amount of funding is understandable, said 49-year-old lawyer Vladimir. Another resident named Vladimir, 50, told AFP the spending was needed for protection. In the current times, it is necessary to spend money on defense because NATO is playing against us, the IT worker said. We have to do something and we can't do it any other way. Drones operated by Ukraine's defense forces attacked the Borisoglebsk military airfield in Russia's Voronezh Oblast on the night of 2-3 October. Source in the security service of Ukraine said this to Ukrainska Pravda. The source reported that drones from the security service of Ukraine, special operations forces, and other branches of Ukraine's defense forces struck warehouses containing guided aerial bombs, parking areas for SU-35 and SU-35. 34 warplanes, and aviation fuel storage sites overnight. The Russians have been using this airfield to launch frequent guided aerial bomb attacks on Ukrainian territory. Posts emerged on Russian social media at night about air defense operations, flights by a large number of drones, and loud explosions and a fire near the local airfield. Satellite monitoring recorded four fires on the territory of Borisoglebsk. Recently, the Ukrainian armed forces struck a warehouse with Iranian missiles. According to the general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces, before the strike on the warehouse, an important echelon arrived at the facility. In addition, the Ukrainian armed forces knocked out hundreds of targets on the territory of the Russian Federation. Ukrainian forces are withdrawing from the frontline town of Volodar, perched atop a tactically significant hill in eastern Ukraine, after more than two years of grinding battle, military officials said Wednesday. Volodar, a town Ukrainian forces fought tooth and nail to keep, is the latest urban settlement to fall to the Russians. 
It follows a vicious summer campaign along the Eastern Front that saw Kiev cede several thousand square kilometers, square miles, of territory. Ukraine's Kortitsia ground forces formation, which commands eastern regions including Donetsk, said in a statement posted on Telegram it was withdrawing troops from Volodar to protect the military personnel and equipment. In an attempt to take control of the city at any cost, reserves were directed to carry out flanking attacks, which exhausted the defense of the units of the armed forces of Ukraine. As a result of the enemy's actions, there arose a threat of encircling the city, the statement said. The tactical significance of the town, situated at the confluence of two major roads, is twofold. Dominant heights and proximity to railway lines offer Moscow greater protection for their own logistics routes, and a better vantage point for attacks against Ukrainian forces and supply lines feeding the south. Its capture is another notch in Moscow's belt, bringing it closer to the key logistics hub of Pokrovsk.